With the experience of selling more than a thousand homes, I can tell you with certainty that no one wants to overpay. Pretty sure it's human nature. But paying fair market and getting a deal are two very different things. It's easy to pay fair market. Well, nowadays it's easy to pay fair market. The past couple of years have been a little nuts to say the least, but now we're actually seeing a lot of normalcy in our marketplace. So how do you get the best deal when buying a new home? Let's break this down and talk about what to look for in order to get the best deal on a house. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand homes and is one of the state's top real estate agents. If you have questions, then know I'm your resource. So back to finding a deal. Finding a deal is all about finding a seller that needs to sell. People have been preconditioned thinking that buying a foreclosure means that you're going to get a good deal. It's simply not true anymore. The banks, they've learned their lesson. Let's go back to something I just said. It's about finding a seller that needs to sell. A bank doesn't need to sell. They have more money than you and me and everyone else. Okay, well, maybe not Elon Musk, but you get the point here. And here's the best, or well, really the worst part. History actually shows that when the banks run out of money, then we're just gonna give them some more. And by we, I mean you and I through the government, but anyway. Many banks are even now fixing up properties as they are aware that distressed properties sell at greater discounts. They've come to the calculated decision that it is either they that are gonna make the money or it's gonna be the regular folks like you and me that's gonna make the return. They choose themselves quite often in that situation. So yeah, foreclosures are not where you're gonna find amazing deals. It's a good old wise tale, just like the wise tale of you needing 20% down in order to buy a house. If you're looking for a value through a bank, then a short sale is probably the most likely way to get that value. But you need to find a home seller who owes more on a loan than the house is worth and is currently behind on their mortgage payments in order for you to do a short sale. And did I mention that American homeowners are sitting on a record amount of equity? So let's just call these guys a needle in the haystack at this point. Doesn't mean that they're not out there, but they're few and far in between. Why can you get a better value here than a foreclosure? The first reason is that you are buying the property in as is condition. In other words, the bank has not had the chance to do the new paint, to do the floors, to do the kitchen. This ultimately means that the house, it's selling for a little bit of a discount because of that as is condition. While the bank isn't the one selling a property in a short sale, they are the one giving their blessing to allow it to happen. Let's say I owe $400,000 on a house but it's now worth 375,000. The bank, they're gonna give me the blessing to sell you the house for 375, and then either forgive that $25,000 to me, or they actually have the right to come back and collect that 25,000 within the next seven years. Banks are happy to do a short sale because it saves them a bunch of money from not having to foreclose on a homeowner. That foreclosure process costs a fortune. And according to mortgagenewsdaily.com, that cost is on average nearly $78,000. In many cases, banks are willing to do that haircut on the seller side in order to minimize their losses. There is more, and we're going to get into where you can find that best deal, but first let's recap. You can rarely get a good deal on a foreclosure. You can normally get a better value on a short sale, but banks aren't idiots. They do a cost benefit analysis and just not gonna give that property away. And oh yeah, by the way, don't be that guy, hit subscribe. So on to where you can find the best deals on a house, again, it's about identifying a seller that needs to sell. And if you're wanting the best deal on a house, then most times or not, it's a regular old fashioned seller sitting on a pile of equity. You oftentimes need to find a seller that's facing some type of hardship in order to find the best deal. Well, either hardship or laziness. So let's start with laziness. Who could this be? Think of a seller who might have just inherited their uncle's house. No attachment to the house whatsoever. The inheritance, it's just a bonus, and at this point, more of a hassle than an asset. These sellers are the favorites for the we buy ugly house companies or the we buy house, houses companies, right? Investors, they love these guys. And by the way, these types of investors are patient. I can tell you that the win percentage goal is to buy one out of every 50 houses they make an offer on. I know this because I owned a we buy houses franchise in the past. Why such a low percentage? Because that one purchase, it's a grand slam each and every single time. So let's talk about the sellers with a hardship that would ultimately provide home buyers with the best values. First, 
let's talk about a couple different types of hardships as examples. The hardships could be a situation where maybe they've lost their job and need the equity in their house in order to get by. They could be homeowners who have bought a new house and need their current one to sell in order to be able to move forward. It could also be a homeowner who has owned their house for 30 years and is just sitting on a pile of equity and is dying to get out of Massachusetts and down to Florida. Divorce, that's another great example. Another one that I think you're gonna see a lot more of in many other parts of the country are developers sitting on a boatload of new inventory. They're going to need to sell at some point. There are a ton of life situations that we could put onto this list, but I really think you got the drift here. Now, it's about finding a property where a seller needs to sell and has been trying to sell. If you can find a home seller with a need to sell, not a want, and there is a very big difference, and find a property that has been on the market for three to six months or more, then the deal gods, they might just deliver in your favor. You can do this in today's current state of the market, but this was something that was very, very difficult to do, eh, quite, quite possibly close to impossible to do until very recently. The deals are out there. You just have to know what to look for. Are you looking for a deal in Massachusetts? If so, then I'd love to chat with you about your real estate goals and see if it makes sense to work with one another. As a heads up, I don't work with everyone and do limit the amount of people that I can work with at once. If I can't help though, then I can promise you that I'm gonna point you in the right direction. And if you're interested in the Massachusetts real estate market and would like to get weekly video updates, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Each week I dig into the data and go over Massachusetts real estate trends as they're actually happening. Do you have any comments or questions about this video? Then throw them in the comment section below. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I know time is precious. And because of that, I'm always gonna take the time to answer all of your questions as well as your comments. And can you do me a huge favor? Can you please share this video with anyone you know that are thinking about making a move in Massachusetts? Whether it's buying or selling an educated person, they're a powerful person. Oh yeah, don't be that guy. Hit subscribe. Until next time.